20 years ago, the first Quidditch match was imagined into existence in the pages of a novel featuring young wizards and witches zooming around on broomsticks. Today, there are 25 teams here in Canada and 150 in the United States, organized into leagues that even have commentators of their own. Yara Kodersha is communications director for Quidditch Canada, and she joins us now to explain how fiction became fact. This is hilarious, you it's, know. It is pretty funny. This is pretty funny. You All have right. to embrace the hilarity of well, it. Well, we, uh, <laughs> as we shall. So, okay, Sheldon, shall we show a clip from one of the movies here? This is from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and it basically, if you don't know anything about this, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, so that's Quidditch. That's Quidditch. <laughs> now, obviously, this is not the way you play it, because no. the best of my knowledge, you guys can't fly. I'm, well, but, we've been trying. But, but what's the idea? So the concept, as far as I'm aware, came from a, a very adapted version of rugby meets handball. I'm actually not sure what sport was the original inspiration for J.K. Rowling, but, uh, but the, basically you're trying to score on three hoops on either side of a pitch, and you've got uh, so kind of like a soccer football type concept there, uh -huh. and then you have a golden snitch, What's which, that? A golden snitch. It's a tiny golden ball that flies around uh, magically. And when you catch the snitch, you end the game and win your team 150 points. So there are different you know, aspects to the game. Some people are scoring. Some people are looking for the snitch. Some people are hitting each other with what we call bludgers, which are kind of like a defensive ball. So it's a very complicated sport. <laughs> but J.K. Rowling does a good job of making it accessible for her readership. Okay. And uh, that was what facilitated a translation from fiction to fact. Now, ball through the hoop. Uh, I remember, Mr. Director, can you sort of show what, there we go. Yep. That's at Queen's University. Yes, that's right. And if you put the ball through the hole, how many points do you, you get for that? You get 10 points. You 10 can points score through the front or the back. The, ship, the pitch is uh, oval shaped. Uh, and, and that ball you talked about that flies through that if you can't, what's that called again? So, so the ball that you score with is called the quaffle. Um, the, and the, and the flying ball. The you, flying ball is called the snitch. Now, how do you do a flying ball in a <laughs> terrestrial game? Sure. So uh, the snitch in uh, real life Quidditch is a person. So it's a person dressed in yellow. They do not belong to either team. I'm not sure if that you can. Oh no, I don't think there is a snitch there. available okay. on this picture. But they don't have a room between their legs. I don't know if you noticed. The rest of them do. Um, but the snitch is a person with a snitch tail. So it's a. a a tennis ball in a sock attached to the back of their shorts, and the seeker has to yank the ball off of the back of their shorts to end the game. And that's 150 points. And, well, in real life, it's only 30. We oh. can't quite keep up with uh, the the flying wizards and witches of J.K. Rowling's universe. Um, but yeah, so just 30 points to catch the snitch. Gotcha. Okay, Yara, we have some footage now of the National Quidditch Championships, which apparently were played by University of British Columbia and Simon Fraser University. And just like with hockey or baseball or whatever, there's play-by-play. -play. There's a guy calling the play-by-play -play here. Right. So let's run some of this. Sheldon, if you would. So they're running up. First possession goes to SFU. SFU, SFU passes it back. <laughs> Playing some defensive play right there. Beater number 30 moving up, giving him room. SFU chaser Alex Boom pushing through. Still retaining possession of the quaffle. Okay, this Here is, uh, yeah, you know, this is, this is it. This is real life footage. This took place on the University of Victoria uh, just this past April. Uh, and the commentator was Mo Waja. He's one of Quidditch Canada's official commentators that you were hearing there. Does this happen with spectators in a stadium? Uh, not quite yet. Uh, the facilities that are able to accommodate us uh, don't necessarily have, you know, stadiums, but a lot of people just come and watch, you know, pull, bring a lawn chair and an umbrella and... You're not charging admission or anything like no, that? No, not just yet. It's, we do appreciate donations, of course. <laughs> We're a growing organization, but it's right now most of our events are free to watch. So the billion dollar, you know, television contract is not quite arrived no, yet. No, it's, it's hopeful. It's just over the hump, but I think, yeah. How long has this been going on for? So the initial uh, creation of Real Life Quidditch was in 2005. It started in Middlebury College in, uh, in the United States. Uh, it was just a couple of college kids that liked the books and thought, hey, can we make this into a real sport? And they did. And they shared their, their adapted rules with other friends. And then it became a, col a collegiate sport in the United States. And then it just expanded from there. Now here we are 12 years later. <laughs> what is the Stanley Cup of Quidditch? So there are there is an international Quidditch association. Um, and that is where every international, every national team can go to compete for like a World Cup. Um, 
So there isn't really a North American Cup just yet that goes for United States and Canada the way the Stanley Cup might no, work. No, no big trophy at the end that you hoist over no, your head. No, not quite. Yeah. Not there yet. We should get on that, though. Well, you know, every big trophy has been donated by a governor general. All right. You know, so Grey Cup, Stanley Cup, we got to ask. Cup. You gotta we'll be, get some contacts, I get, guess. Get David Johnston on speed <laughs> right, dial and make this happen. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. What do, you play the game, I guess. I do, yes. What do you like about it? It's, uh, there's, okay, so first of all, I guess it's more complex than meets the eye, for sure. Um, I like that it's an opportunity for myself as somebody who hasn't really had a, a large experience with contact sports to get into it when I was in my 20s. Um, it's a gender-inclusive sport, so... It's, men and women compete against each other. Uh, men and women competing together, but it's also trans inclusive. So uh, the, the our gender rule is a maximum of four people who identify as one gender huh. can be on on the pitch at the same time. The competitiveness and you know the sheer veracity of the play is also <laughs> really exciting to me as well. And the community is just such a powerful community. You know, people come in as players and then stay as volunteers and. You know, here we are five, six, seven years later, and we're still here helping got, the sport grow. I got 30 seconds left to ask you this. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't think of any other sport that started as fiction and then turned into fact. Yes. Can you? Jugger. What's that? Jugger uh, is based from a movie. It's sort of like a mealy uh, plastic weapons sport, but that, that would be one example. It's actually really great. It's really popular in Germany, I'm pretty mm. sure, but yeah. Well, uh, uh, um, what, what does one say? But uh, is there a special way of saying good luck in Quidditch? Good luck will definitely suffice That'll for sure. That'll suffice. Yeah. Okay, so Yara, good luck with making Quidditch the next big thing. Thanks so much. It's lovely being here. <laughs> and lovely to have you here. Thanks so much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.